everybody, welcome back, and today we are finally doing my review and tutorial for the Norns palette from Odin's Eye. Now, I've had this palette for about a month, I've played with it extensively, and I've formed some thoughts and opinions on it that I want to share with you. Now, I will be doing probably four or five looks in this tutorial, it'll be a pretty quick process. If you want to see that, I will put the timestamp down below for to skip forward to the review if you just want to see the review in swatches. But if you want to see some looks and my thoughts on this palette from Odin's Eye, then stick around.
let's go ahead and jump into the review. So first of all, the palette, this is called the Norn's Eyeshadow Palette, and this is based on, Odin's Eye bases all of their makeup on Swedish folklore, which I think is really, really cool. So the Norns are kind of like the three fates in Greek mythology where they kind of weave the, the pattern of time and destiny. So really cool. The outside packaging is really beautiful. It comes with this sleeve right here, and then it has the ingredients on the back along with all of the shade names. And this is cruelty-free, and it does have a three-year shelf life on it. Now, this palette retails for $28.90 uh, $28 in euros, which is about $34, $35 US, plus you're going to be paying for shipping. Now, I did spend over 50 euros and got free shipping. The shipping did take a little bit of time, but so, and they were trying to get from Sweden to Virginia, and really it just spent most of the delay was the USPS because it's a mess right now. So the palette is a nice cardboard. It's got a beautiful, again, it matches the the sleeve, beautiful packaging on it. On the back, it does list the names. Um, it says the palette was made in China. Again, it has the cruelty-free and the 36 months, and you can recycle this. So I like this as my ideal kind of packaging. You have the magnetic closure cardboard. When you open it up, mine is extremely dirty. I apologize. You do have a nice mirror in here, and it continues on visually with the theming. So you have like some celestial symbols in here, and you can fold this all the way back, which is really nice. So as you can see, I've really played with this palette. It is quite dirty. Now, as far as the theming goes, my only gripe with this palette, and it's not really even a gripe, it's just kind of like it didn't really make sense to me, is that the names do not necessarily all, as far as I can see, make sense in terms of the Norns and, and their place in Swedish mythology. Just from my limited knowledge of it. You've got the shade Dazed, Pink Chameleon, Realism, Amber Palace, Mist, Optimism, Passion, Green Chameleon, Obsessed, Pragmatism, Colorful Black, Outsider, Hallucination, Self, Glamour, and Charming. So just some names that are just kind of random in terms of the overall beautiful theming of this palette. It's not a negative by any means, it's just an observation. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these for you. I'm just gonna go row by row so you can kind of see how they look in swatches and then we'll kind of as we go through the swatches, I'll kind of just share some thoughts with you on these colors. So the first color is a Dazed, which is a matte, and it is a very, very interesting color. It's almost like a sagey, browny gray. And I thought when I first started using this palette, I was like, how am I even going to use this color? It's so odd, but really it works beautifully as a transition with a lot of the other mattes in here, especially Mist and Outsider. You wouldn't think it would lend itself, and it seems kind of be to be kind of the odd man out, but really it works beautifully, and it's what I have in my transition today. It blends out beautifully. Really like the matte texture overall in this palette, and this one is absolutely, it's kind of like a surprising favorite. The next shade is Pink Chameleon, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the shift in this color is amazing. And I will say, all of the kind of super shimmery colors, they all look like they have hard pan on them, but really, if you were familiar with the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow formula, that's kind of the texture, so it doesn't stop you from picking up color or applying it to the eye. It's very odd. But just know, if you pick up this palette and you start getting hard pan after one or two uses, it is not affecting the performance of the shadow. So that one has a crazy gold, yellow to green to pink turn on it. I would consider this one more of a topper shade or something you'd wanna put over a base. It's beautiful on the inner corner. But yeah, I mean, so even though it does have that hard pan consistency in the palette, <laughs> in the pan, it's not going to stop you from using the shade. The next shade I would consider more of a shimmer shade, and this is called Realism. And this one is kind of a, I would say, matte to shimmer. I mean, sorry, not matte to shimmer, satin to shimmer. It's very beautiful. It's very rich. I would say it is a very true kind of cool tone brown. And these shimmer shades actually also get a little bit of that hard pan, but it does not affect the performance. Really beautiful. It's a gorgeous shade, but it is just, again, it just 
it's an odd texture. I don't know. These shimmers are, I feel like this formula is very interesting to anything else I have in my collection other than those super shock shadows. But yeah, really beautiful. I have used this in the outer corner. I have used this kind of in terms of a matte shade. And while it's not going to give me as clean of a look as I like with a matte shadow, it will suffice to really deepen up the outer V and add some definition to your eye. The next shade in this top row is Amber Palace, which is a, if you can see it in the pan, it's kind of a gold and silver marbleized shade. Again, we're getting that kind of weird hard pan in it, but it's not affecting the performance of the shadow. And these colors are super, super metallic and wet looking. Now this one, out of all of the shades in the palette, I would say is definitely the most toppery shade out of all of them really gorgeous. It's got a lot of sparkle to it and it's going to be probably the least likely to show up without help, but it, I like using it in the inner corner over optimism. I feel like it gives me a really pretty bright cool tone gold kind of look in the inner corner. Not one of my favorite shades in the palette, but it is really beautiful. So, but in terms of what you see on your finger and what you see on your eye, it's definitely probably going to be the least impactful out of all of these shimmers. All right, let's move on to the next row. So another one of my favorite shades in the palette is this one right here called Mist. This is a beautiful, smoky, kind of lavendery, rosy purple, if that makes any sense. It blends out beautifully. It's a gorgeous color in the crease, blended out into a transition shade on its own, or it does work really well with dazed. And it really just kind of acts as a support for some of these warmer shades in the palette. Next shade is probably one of my favorite in the palette, and this is Optimism. It's what I have on the inner portion of my lid today. It is a really interesting, it's a silver, but it's an interesting silver. It's like a silver with a golden green turn to it. It is definitely more impactful than Amber Palace, and I think this shade is just beautiful. I reach for this shade probably more than any other in the palette, and I think it is really gorgeous. You're going to get a lot of fallout with this one, along with all of the other shimmers in the palette, but I like to wet it down as I do with most shimmers I work with and it works fine. The next shade in the palette is probably another one of my least favorites and this is called Passion. Now this one does have hard pan to the point where it's kind of affecting the shade a little bit. This one is, is very much like realism where it's kind of that satin shimmer hybrid but I have used it in the crease to deepen it up. And unfortunately, the hard pan that I've gotten in with this one is kind of affecting the shade, but this one is probably one of my least favorite shades in the palette. It is really pretty. It's a kind of orangey red, and it does work really well with the purples and the browns in this palette, but not one of my favorites. The next shade is one that I have on my eyes today, kind of all over my lid, and this is Chameleon, Green Chameleon, and the shift on this one is just incredible. And again, this one is going to be really reflective, really high impact on the eye, and just really beautiful. It's so really beautiful, so again, it's got that super shock shadow type of texture, but that is the second row right there. All right, let's move on to the third row. And this first shade is called Obsessed. Now this one is kind of almost between realism and passion and the other shimmery shades in this palette. It is really beautiful. It's kind of a warm, plummy tone. It is absolutely gorgeous on the eye. I really like this with mist. Like you put this in the outer corner or all over the lid and blend it out with mist, you're gonna get a beautiful look. It is definitely not the shiniest shade in the palette but it is very, very pigmented and beautiful and it is high impact on the eye. The next shade in here is another matte and this is Pragmatism, which is just a straight up matte brown. Now this is not as deep as, uh, not as deep as Realism, which is a little confusing as to why they would not make this matte color deeper than some of the shimmer shades in here or the satiny shades. But again, it is pretty. It's pretty in the crease. It doesn't quite give me the depth that I like. And I don't think if you're a deeper skin tone and you like a lot of depth in the crease, I don't think this one is going to give you quite the depth that you want. But it is a nice matte. It blends out nicely. It's, I don't like it as much as mist and dazed, but it is nice. It's nice quality and it blends out nicely. The next shade is Colorful Black, and this is a, again, one of those kind of shimmery, 
shimmery satiny shades. Now this is ends up just showing up kind of matte on the eye in terms of how it looks, but in terms of how it behaves, it doesn't necessarily behave as a matte. Now I don't know how to describe this, but if you play around with eyeshadows a lot, you know that when you use a satin shade or a shimmery shade on your eye, especially all over to deepen up your crease, it there's a little bit of almost like slip to it, if that makes sense. You know it's not going to necessarily just stay where you put it. It's going to transfer a little bit, and it's going to look a little messy. So even though this shade goes on essentially matte, it almost behaves like a shimmer or satin shade into where it doesn't necessarily really stay where I want it to stay and act like a matte, and it kind of lends to a more grungy, kind of slightly sloppy look. I mean, it's fine. It works. It's just not, I would have much preferred that black to be a matte in this palette. And I think that would have changed a lot of things for me in this palette. But just because of the formula, it just doesn't necessarily behave in a way that I would prefer it to behave. Plus, I'm. it's very rare that I'm going to just put black all over my eye. So it is an interesting shade, but it is, it's a little bit of a challenge for me. This next shade is called Outsider, and this is a deep kind of bluey green, almost like foresty green. I have this. It looks more green in the pan than it does on the eye or when you swatch it out. Uh, this is what I have all in my transition and crease today. This is a really pretty matte. It feels really nice. It blends out nicely but you're going to have to take some time to blend it out unless you set your base. So if you haven't set your eye and you're just putting it straight on concealer or primer or whatever you're putting it on, it's going to take a little bit of time to blend it out just because it is so pigmented. But if you set your eye, it's going to blend out a lot easier and really just create a lot of depth in the eye as well as a nice blown out effect in your transition. So that is the third row. That would actually be a really pretty look right there with a the shimmer. I'll have to do something like that. All right, let's move on to the last row, which is probably going to be a lot of people's favorites in this palette. And these are all kind of that super shock shimmer kind of texture. So the first one is Hallucination, which looks like this. I have applied these wet and dry to my lid. They apply great wet dry, but they are a little flaky. So even though they look, it's weird, they look wet on the finger, but they are still a little flaky. So I do find wetting down your brush a little bit does help. But this is a gorgeous kind of bluey green base with pinky purple, with a pinky purple shift to it. Probably help if I wasn't like moving the mirror around really gorgeous. And then this one is called Self, which is like a blue purple base with kind of like a bluey green turn to it. And again, these are all really high impact on the eye. They're really gorgeous. This shade is Glamour, which has got an orange base with a yellow gold turn to it or glitter to it. Right there. And then the last one is Charming, which is like a blue, it's almost like a purple with a bluey pink turn to it. Get some good swatches there. So these are really gorgeous and I could see myself, I mean, I could see myself going into this palette just to pick up one of these or these or, or one of these shades down here or Green Chameleon or Optimism. Those are definitely my favorites in the palette. So really, really beautiful. Again, just interesting. It was just kind of an interesting learning experience, learning how to play with these shadows. So if you're somebody who doesn't like to take the time to really play with shadows and kind of learn uh, you know, kind of some intricacies of a formula, you know, that just a heads up, that might be a little bit of a detractor for you. Now, overall, I think the shimmers in here are gorgeous. I think these two mattes are gorgeous. I'm not a fan of these three shades right here, just because again, these are more typically shades I would want to use to deepen up a look. And just because of the nature of their texture, they're going to lead to a little bit more of a sloppy, grungy, not as defined, put together look as I usually like. 
And I would say that really when I sat down with this palette for the first time, it kind of threw me for a loop, this color story. Normally color stories don't bother me. I, you know, I can have colors all over the place and it's fine. And I don't think that's what bothers me so much about this palette. I really think it's just the choice of textures and color combinations. So whereas personally, I probably would have had um, this be a matte, this be a matte, this be a matte, maybe this be a shimmer. I think that would have really kind of changed the palette for me and I would have been a lot more excited about it. Overall, I think ease of use, I would say it's probably, it's not going to be the easiest palette to work with. If you're somebody who really enjoys eyeshadows and eyeshadow palettes and playing and creating looks, and you like the challenge of putting looks together in a more interesting color story, this palette's gonna be right up your alley. If you're somebody who relies heavily on mattes, this is not gonna be for you, but if you're somebody who is crazy about shimmers, especially kind of that super shock type of formula, you're gonna love this. Just know that if you're not really adventurous as far as color goes, or you're not somebody who really likes to think about what colors to use where, just know this might pose a little bit of a challenge for you. I think it was fun and it kind of stretched me and I had to sit down and really play with this palette quite a bit to kind of get into it and really understand how it works. Overall, I really like this palette. I don't think it's my favorite that I've tried this year. I've created some really pretty looks with it, but it's not one that I, like, I'm like, oh yeah, I get to sit down and play with this palette. It's like once the looks are done, I'm like, oh, okay, I really like that look and I enjoy it. So it, that's kind of like, you know, there are some palettes you can't wait to use, and this is not necessarily one of those for me. But overall, I think the color choices in here, as far as the shimmers, are beautiful. Some of these shimmers are just like this, like, I'm just looking at this in the pan, and the shift on it is just incredible. And I think this is a palette I will reach for for the shimmers in general, and maybe not so much some of these just more shimmery shades, kind of like these I could kind of do without love these and then I love all the shimmers. So, you know, it's it's not a bad palette. It's not my favorite palette. I think it's a really good solid palette and I think for $35, I think that's an appropriate price, especially for an indie brand. I think that's really affordable. Again, I appreciate the theming of the palette despite the names being a little odd. I think the theming and the thought behind the palette is really, really beautiful. And, you know, I'm happy to have it in my collection and I'm happy to try out this brand. I also did pick up the All the Two palette, which I have yet to play with because I've just been focusing on this one. And I am kind of more drawn to the color story in that palette. It seems to make a little bit more sense to me. So I will be interested and excited to try that out. But overall, I do enjoy, you know, like I said, I do enjoy this palette. I just won't think you should be aware of your makeup style and your priorities in terms of when you sit down to do makeup. Are you wanting to do colorful looks? Or are you more of a neutral person? You know, do you like kind of putting color stories together or do you just want it laid out for you? I think those are just some things you need to take into consideration. And But again, I think price-wise, packaging-wise, this palette is fantastic. Again, shipping's gonna take a little bit longer because it's coming internationally. I think it really is just a matter of the color story and your preference in terms of eyeshadows. And if you are not somebody who likes, and if you're somebody, again, who really relies heavily on mattes, not, you know, this would probably not be the palette for you. Again, if these three were matte, this review would be completely different. I think this would be a hands down like Grand Slam palette, but just because of the texture choice for those colors, it's just kind of, it's kind of bumping it down for me. All right, guys, but those are just my thoughts on the palette. Some good, some bad, some great nothing terrible. Just, you know, just some pros and cons. So I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you're interested in this palette or have you picked it up or is it on your wish list? I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the looks and I hope you got some helpful, useful information today. As always, thank you so much for hanging out and talking about makeup with me. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Have a rocking week and I will see you next time. Bye.